In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this pair of nightstands with something cool hidden in the tops, and I do have plans available if you'd like to build it yourself. Let's get into it. If you missed my last video, I got an order for an entire bedroom suite, so these nightstands would be built to match the bed. I started the build by breaking down the ash boards that would make up the tops on the miter saw. After orienting the boards the best I could, I then got the panels glued up so they'd have plenty of time to dry. Didn't really need any biscuits for alignment or anything on a panel this size, just glue and good even clamping pressure. With the top set aside, I broke down the 3 quarter inch plywood that would be used for pretty much everything else with the track saw. After having the pieces cut to a more manageable size, I then used the table saw to cut everything to final dimension. Next was the miner saw to cut the stretchers and some of the drawer pieces to length. Having the miner saw station and stop block set up has been invaluable for batch cutting like this. If you haven't checked out my video building it, head to my page after this and give it a watch. The last thing to do before assembly was cutting a rabbit in the back of the side pieces and bottom of the cabinet to accept the quarter inch plywood back. After running the pieces through once, I just bumped the fence over to make a second pass to get the size I needed for the quarter inch plywood. To join the pieces together, I just added glue to the edges and then tacked them in place with a brad nailer. Then I pre-drilled and countersank some screws to really pull everything together. The trim I'd be adding will cover these screws, so it was a really quick and easy way to get it done. Then it was the same process with glue and screws for the two top stretcher pieces. Next I moved on to making the face frame out of some 3 quarter inch poplar. You'll see the top and bottom rails of the face frame are wider than the styles. This is so after I add the trim on top and bottom I'm left with the same size showing as the sides. To join the pieces I just drilled pocket holes on both ends of the rail pieces. Then I could add glue, clamp the pieces so they don't move, and get them attached with the pocket hole screws. To attach the face frame to the box, I added glue, and then since I'd be painting it and the holes could be filled, I just used a brad nailer to get it attached. Normally I make my face frame larger than the box to give a small reveal, but since I'd be wrapping trim around the sides, it needed to be flush. To make this seam really disappear, I like to use Bondo. It dries really hard and of course paints well. While the Bondo dried, I started cutting all the bottom trim pieces to length, just by holding them in place and making my marks. I failed to mention this in the bed video, but rather than making my own trim, I wanted to use stuff readily available at Home Depot, so if you guys want to follow the plans and build this yourself, it's a lot more approachable. Then I flipped the box over and did the same process for the crown molding. I like to cut my crown nested, which means you're cutting it upside down and backwards, so actually being able to flip the box itself upside down to make these marks made this really easy. Of course I always like to glue my corners together first and since this is MDF trim, CA glue works really well here and they're locked together perfect in just a few seconds. With the boxes still upside down, I slid the crown molding on and got it attached with brad nails. Then it was the same process with the bottom trim, except the new Milwaukee 23 gauge pinner literally got delivered as I was working, so I switched over to giving that a try along with glue. First impression with this pinner is that it's just as awesome as the brad nailer and other Milwaukee staplers that I have. It leaves much cleaner and smaller holes and is perfect for stuff like this. Perfect for stuff like this. 
Next I moved on to making the drawers. I had already cut the sides to length, so to get exact measurements for the front and back pieces, I set the sides in place and subtracted one inch for the drawer slides, and then got all the pieces cut to size. For the drawer bottoms, I cut a quarter inch groove in all four pieces on the table saw. After running all the pieces through, I bumped the fence over to make a second pass, giving me the size of groove I needed to fit my plywood. To join the pieces, I once again used pocket holes, drilling them on the front of the front pieces and on the back of the back pieces. This is still just one of my favorite ways to make drawers, as once the false drawer front is added, there are no visible fasteners anywhere, and they're really quick to make. Before assembling the drawers, I went ahead and applied iron-on edge banding to all the pieces. It's a pretty straightforward process, you just iron it on, trim off the excess, and lightly sand the edges. There are specialty tools you can get for this, but I'm not a fan of the one I got, so a simple razor blade works just fine. The last piece was cutting the drawer bottoms to size, as well as the back of the cabinets. Then I could add glue to an edge, clamp the pieces together to keep these pesky pocket holes from moving around, and screw them together. Here I'm adding some scrap half inch material as spacers to bump the drawer slides out flush with the face frame, just gluing and brad nailing them on. With that done, I went ahead and stapled the quarter inch back panel on, setting it inside those rabbits I cut at the beginning. Then I could start working on the false drawer fronts. Since I'd be adding trim to the front of these, I went ahead and got my drawer pole holes drilled now using this True Position Tools hardware jig. This is a super quality American made jig and is way more efficient and accurate than some of the cheaper plastic jigs I've used in the past. After sanding the edges good, I then used Bondo to make sure any imperfections in the plywood were filled. I just found this gives a way better finish than painting edge banding. And the reason for using plywood to begin with is it's much more stable than solid wood, so I wouldn't have to worry about the trim I'd be adding separating over time. Once again, this is a profile available at Home Depot, and I'll leave a link to everything below. I just got it attached using glue and the Milwaukee Pinner again. To match the bed, I made the same style of feet for the nightstands, first using a 3 quarter inch round nose bit in the router to create this cove detail. Clamping on a straight edge and a block at the end to eliminate tear out gave great results as I worked around all four sides. I left the pieces longer while cutting the coves to give space for clamping, so after that I got them cut to final size. Next was cutting the taper detail using the same jig from the bed build. If you missed that, make sure you go check it out. I show making this jig and it literally only takes a few minutes. I just had to readjust my clamps here to work for the nightstands. On this last cut on the fourth side, the only square point of reference is this short section at the top. It still worked out fine with this alignment piece on the front preventing it from moving at all. But learn from me if you decide to make this, it definitely would have been better to keep these pieces longer to cut the tapers first before cutting them to final size. If you don't have any of these profile sanding blocks you can get off Amazon, I highly recommend them. It makes sanding all these different profiles a lot easier. The last detail on the legs was some leveling feet. First using a Forstner bit to make the recess for the feet, and then a regular drill bit for the threaded inserts. This style of insert just threads right in, and then the leveling feet can thread into that, which I waited to add until the end of the project. To attach the legs to the boxes, I applied glue and a couple brad nails to keep them from moving. 
and then pre-drilled and sank a couple screws from inside. Then it was on to taking the ash tops out of clamps and getting it cut to final size. For the hidden wireless charger, I flipped the top over and simply traced the charger out in the front corner that would be closest to the bed. Using a straight bit in the router, I kept making shallow passes until reaching full depth where the charger would work through the wood even with a phone case on. Then I switched over to a quarter inch bit and set up a straight edge to make a recess for the cord. I still really need practice with my new Imagination 2 Reality I2R8 CNC, so all the while I was cutting that first one out with the router, I had the second one going on the CNC. It only took a few minutes to make the file and get it cut out. This is such an awesome addition to the shop and was great to use this as another learning opportunity. Once the cutouts were done, it was on to the finishing stage. First applying a slip coat of mineral spirits and then some general finishes gray gel stain to the tops. If you've watched any of my videos, you know Zinzer Ben Shellac Primer is my go-to. It sprays and sands so smooth and is just in general an awesome primer. But cleaning out the gun afterwards is a bit more work. So let me know down in the comments if you have any good water-based alternatives that spray just as good. It's so nice having an awesome sprayer like the Graco 9.5 HVLP here where I can move around and spray all these angles with the pressurized cup liner. After a couple primer coats and sanding in between with 320 grit, I switched over to General Finishes White Poly to finish it off. After the stain had time to dry on the tops, I applied a few coats of shellac, just wiping it on with an old t-shirt. After the final coat dries, I like to go over it with double lot steel wool. It's nearly impossible to get a flawless finish without any dust nibs on flat surfaces like this, so this removes those and also doles out the sheen to a more satin finish, which I prefer over glossy. You can see the difference in sheen between the two here. To hold the wireless chargers in place, I used some dabs of hot glue. Plenty strong enough to hold it, but still easily removable for if, well, let's be honest, when these chargers go bad or technology changes. To finish up the stands, I first installed 11 feet into the legs. Then for attaching the tops, I drilled some holes in those stretcher pieces and then widened the holes to allow seasonal expansion and contraction of the ash top. I did have to re-drill one of the holes here in the corner as the screws would have went right through the charger, so luckily I caught that first. I like to work with gravity when I can, so for the drawer slides, I just laid the stand over on its side and I had already marked a center line on those filler strips before nailing them in, so I simply lined up the slide and screwed them on. For the mating piece on the drawer boxes, I measured out where the slide needed to be and then got it attached the same way. Before installing the drawers, I first got the top attached, which I clearly got an awesome shot of here. To get perfect spacing on inset drawer fronts, I like to use playing cards as spacers. You just push the pieces to one side and then fill the gap with as many cards as you can. 
And then in this case, I split that number of cards into three to fill each space in between them, and then into two for the sides. I temporarily attach the fronts with screws using the drawer pull holes I already drilled. Adding some tape beforehand here would make getting these drawers open a lot easier, but I got it nonetheless. Then I pre-drill and permanently attach the fronts with screws from the inside. Lastly, I remove those front screws, finish drilling all the way through the drawer box, and then get the poles installed. All right, thanks for watching. Like I mentioned, everything, all the plans, all the tools and products I use are linked in the description. Until next time, take care.